IHS Sports TV is proud to bring you coverage of the 2020 MIAA Division I Girls Ice Hockey Tournament. From the O'Brien Ice Rink in Woburn, it's the number seven seed Belmont Marauders at 15, three and four, taking on the highest remaining tournament seed, the number two Austin Prep Cougars at 19, one and two in this quarterfinal round of the state tournament. And hello everyone, I'm Todd Bloniars and uh, being joined alongside by BHS Sports TV executive producer and videographer Jeremy Meserve, and also joined here uh, in the broadcast booth by Nolan Grace, a member of the 2019-20 uh, uh, boys hockey team, which is on a bit of a tournament run on their own. We'll get to that a little bit later, Nolan, uh, throughout the uh, broadcast here, but uh, talking about the, the girls' run that they've had so far, uh, a couple of uh, impressive wins, uh, and uh, they've had, uh, they've gotten performances. Uh, Mo Donovan's been hot uh, in the uh, scoring department, and uh, freshman goalie Bridget Gray has been coming up huge. And, and the Marauders on one of their deepest runs in program history. Yeah, I mean they've been amazing so far. I mean Bridget's been having an incredible season. Incredible season. Uh, Megan Noon's been outstanding too, She's holding the D back there with Jenna Crowley. Um, I mean Mo Donovan's been on a scoring streak of, of lately. So if they can just play hard and attack, they might have a chance to win this game. So. Excited to see what happens. Yeah, Belmont uh, began their second playoff appearance in the last five years with a 4-2 win at the uh, at the Skip Vigoro Wood Rink against uh, the 26th seed Winthrop in the uh, field of 32. They got a hat trick from uh, Emma O'Donovan in that game, and then she also scored both goals in the Marauders' last win, 2-0 uh, over Waltham. Bridget Gray picking up her 10th shutout of the season in net for that one. Austin Prep in the green and white as the higher seed uh, with the uh, the white jerseys, the green trim, and the Marauders all in maroon here as uh, the lower seed in this contest. First time Marauders uh, are a lower seed in the MIAA tournament. And Marauders trying to get it into the Austin Prep Cougars zone. And Cougars come back the other way, Monique Lyons Going into the zone, good defense. Uh, Megan Noon is, uh, Nolan just mentioned, uh, doing a nice job defensively there. Lions has it back. And Marauders putting in some pressure behind the net. It's sent back out to the point. The shot is wide and it winds up on the stick of Emma O'Donovan, number 21 junior forward, who scored five of the six playoff goals for Belmont. She's looking to center that one. It went off the side of the net and it will uh, skip on back out of the zone. Here comes Gianna DiFilippo. She'll dump it on in. Marauders give chase. They send it around the boards. And it is maintained there by Prep, but right on the stick of Megan Noon, one of the senior captains. And she sends it up to O'Donovan, who's double teamed and ridden off the puck. Swept around to the far boards and back out of the zone. Belmont will have to retreat at center. Here's Megan New, far side to uh, Maggie O'Connor. Dumping it in and uh, Austin Preps able to once again get it out of the zone as we've played two minutes here in the opening period. Remaining scoreless as it's dumped in and Puck takes kind of a funny bounce, and Bridget Gray will hold on to it for a faceoff. Yeah, so far, not a bad start. Megan Noon pulling the defense back there. Also going to play field hockey at Holy Cross. So, pretty impressive. Her older brother, Ryan, is uh, a sophomore at Tufts University and trying to crack the starting lineup for the Jumbos baseball team later this spring. I guess technically it's still winter on the calendar, although uh, you wouldn't know what the winter we've had. Here's Madeline Rinklin, and it'll have an offside, and faceoff will come back outside the blue line. Uh, I mean, Jenna Crowley, also a uh, sibling of Dennis Crowley, is here in attendance too. He attends Nickel College. So, uh, uh, the Bison. Yeah, the Bison. <laughs> so it's uh, good to see, like. I'm pretty good with my D3 mascot, yeah. so you want to quiz <laughs> me to, later. It's you good can, to uh, see siblings come and support them, you know, so. Absolutely. Uh, an ex Marauder, played uh, three sports. Hockey, baseball, and football. Oh, yeah, yeah. I think he was an uh, offensive lineman, I remember. And yeah. there's Fanning on the shot. She had a great opportunity. Again, that was uh, Monique Lyons, point blank, right in front of Bridget Gray, but couldn't get everything on the shot, and it went wide. And Austin Prep able to keep it in. Here's Isabel Hulse. Shot is over Gray, and 
behind the net. Marauders trying to clear it out, and they do. And up on the break, it is Emma O'Donovan. O'Donovan racing, being defended well there by Francesca Freelich. That would probably be the younger sister of Sal Freelich, who was all everything. Uh, I'm looking to see a hometown of Lexington One there. One of the best athletes I've ever seen. Oh my goodness, yeah, I'll tell you that. Still remember that Lexington Belmont football game from a couple of years ago. Wow. And here's a shot on oh. and a save by Gray. That was uh, racing in. That was Freelich. Coming in from her blue line position. And once again, it's O'Donovan. You can see why O'Donovan's so uh, proficient in scoring. She seems to be the first one up the ice every time. Mm -hmm. But so far, Austin Prep's been up to the challenge of having at least one player, if not two, right on top of her. She's uh, racing in on net. A little bit of uh, pressure there by the Marauders, but the Cougars send it into the Belmont zone. Noon will send it back to center, and there's a steal. Nicely executed by Sam Rochi, the junior forward, and she'll knock it into the zone. Once again, back out to center. Jenna Crowley retreats. Gets it near side here, too. I believe that was uh, Kendall Whalen. Mm -hmm along the near boards. UMass low commit from the cross. And here's a shot right in. Another save by Gray. The rebound is loose, and it is swept out nicely by the Marauders. And you can see why Bridget Gray is, uh, you see in here early on, why she's been such a presence for the Marauders this year and why they've been able to make this tournament run. She's been great so far. <laughs> Taking over for the uh, graduated Amanda Hanley, who had a pretty good career herself. Gray comes into this game with a 1.38 goals against average and 10 shutouts on the season. Not a big deal. <laughs> and uh, varsity uh, head coach Ken Murphy in his fifth season, very happy to have uh, her playing as well in net. Good defense there from the Marauders. And here's another shot on, another save for Gray. Rebound, it's loose. Another shot and another save as Molly uh, checked that. That was uh, Lauren Berry was trying to knock home the rebound. Sent into the near corner. Back to get it is Crowley. Now it's stolen. The Cougars have lost just one game all year coming into this tournament. And they're winners of 13 straight. Now there's a scramble in front. It's again cleared out nicely by Molly Dacey. And it is swept around. And not only is uh, Gray coming up big in net, but uh, she's getting help from her teammates yeah. on defense. Good job covering the slot by uh, Belmont so far. So. That one's back on the stick of Megan Noon. She gets it to center. Lions. Steals it there, knocked back in once again. And that's uh, Del Bonin retreating, retreating to get that. Once again, back out of the zone and dumped in once again by Austin Prep into the far corner. Once again, Bonin will clear it on out. That is uh, Ern Tabor. Number nine with it for Austin Prep sends it near side now to Emma Guthrie. Guthrie along the near boards where just disappear out of our view slightly there. We are we have some great uh, great vantage point here on the balcony at the O'Brien Ice Rink, a place uh, I haven't been to for over a quarter century. I remember uh, doing a boys hockey game up here back in the 1990s. Yes, I'm officially old. And there's a, a shot right in front again, though. Nice defense by the Marauders. Uh, Megan Noon was in the right place. There to protect her goalie. It is kept in by the Cougars, trying to lead on the attack. Again, Marauders trying to clear this one out of the zone. And it will be uh, sent out by Sam Rochi. And the high stick infraction will give us a whistle with 7.33 to go here in the opening period. Still no score in this uh, MIA Division I girls state hockey tournament game. Well, Bridget Gray's been uh Pretty good so far. I mean, she's coming off a great game against Waltham. The shutout, two nothing. So expect nothing less too. She's been great so far this season. But uh, continue to see her play well. O'Donovan wins the face off, and from the point, the uh, shot by 
think that was uh, Devin Kelleher, 16. Or check that 18, that was Bonin who was up at the point. Now along the boards, O'Donovan is, uh, O'Donovan knocked into the boards. Comes back near side and Austin Prep has it. Another shot from the, uh, right near the boards off the uh, stick of uh, Felicia Zakola, senior defenseman. Another save for Bridget Gray. Uh, Bridget Gray also was a varsity soccer athlete, so yeah, she plays more than one sport. Is she a goalie in uh, I don't think she's a goalie. Oh, okay. She's a defender. Would have There's been. a couple soccer players on this team. Lily Duffy also, sibling of Emily Duffy, so good. Runs track at Bates. All right, there's an attempted uh, centering pass, but uh, Isabel Huss couldn't get her stick down. And the Marauders, of course, send it back out to center. That'll be good, even, pretty even back and forth play, although I, I would say maybe Austin Preps had a little bit more control as the Marauders ice the puck. That's our first icing call we've had in this game, 6.39 to go here in the opening period. Yeah, it's been a good tempo game. A little physical, too. Those are bumping each other, so I'd like to see that. Yeah, you have to think, uh, Stephanie Wood, the head coach of Austin Prep, you have to think her strategy going into the game, just even just looking at the stat sheet, yeah. you know, get one or two players on O'Donovan yeah. and, and try to also, like, you know, get physical with her as well. Yeah. There's another shot in. Gray sticks it aside uh, off the, uh, that was Madeline Rinklin shooting from the point. Tabor has it. Tabor tries to move on in around a couple of maroon defenders, and it is uh, in along the near boards and back out to center. Rinklin will send it far corner. Noon's there to get it. And she sends it up ice, it'll be another icing. Yep. So again, we have another whistle with 6.02 to go here in the first period, still no score. Yeah, I'd like to see uh, Belma try to gain the red line and dump it in. There's been a few icings, but Playing good defensively so far, covering the slot, like I said before, and you know, get awesome prep. Eliminate those uh, high scoring chances. Give Bridget Gray the shots she can save, or we know we, she can save, so. This is the third of four quarterfinal games being played here at the O'Brien Rink in Woburn this weekend. Uh, we had a couple of uh, close ones last night as Boston Ladin defeated Duxbury and Woburn from the Middlesex League, and of course from the Marauders uh, Liberty Division defeating St. Mary's both winners, uh, both teams won by scores of two to one. They'll play each other on Monday, right back here at this rink, and Marauders hoping to also be playing Monday here in Woburn. They'll be playing the winner of the next quarterfinal game to follow this one. That'll feature third seed Braintree against sixth seed Arlington, also another member of the Middlesex League large. So uh, Middlesex League well represented in this girls ice hockey tournament, especially as we get down from the original field of 32. That one went off the side of the net, but Gray was there to cover the post. And it goes back to Maeve Carey. Carey making a move across center, and she'll fire one from the blue line. It's well over the goal. And Austin Prep does feel like they've controlled the play a little bit more over the last few minutes. Certainly have had more scoring opportunities. Marauders with a couple of icings to try to uh, thwart off the Cougar attack. And once again sent down, there's uh, Alexandra Martinson. Marauders are there defensively uh, once again. That's Bonin, Del Bonin, nice uh, job to uh, get her off the puck. Shot dribbles in and right on the stick of Megan Noon is right in front of her goaltender to Cover that one up. Down under four and a half minutes to go here in a fast moving first period. Of course, if you're used to watching either college or the pros, I guess 15 minutes periods would tend to go quickly anyway. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> as opposed to the 20 at uh, the uh, higher levels. Here's a steal and a shot and another save. I think Gray got a piece of that one. Oh, and that was free look again with the shot. She's had a couple of the better shot opportunities for Austin Prep here in the early going. That one pops out in front. The puck's loose and covered on by Gray. Nice job as there was again some pressure from Austin Prep there, but Gray's been up to the challenge oh, so far. Uh, no Gray's one. made some unbelievable saves. There you go. The shows one right there, but I mean, she's looking pretty good right now, so I'm almost going to be feeling pretty good about that. 3.53 to go here in the first period. 
face off. Won by uh, Jalen Marchetta. But it is controlled ultimately by Austin Prep. Uh, Noon trying to clear it out. Sent back up to the point. There's Carey. Carey a long shot in. A save by Gray through traffic. Boy, she is uh, seeing the puck well here, even, even when she yeah. screamed on it. Uh, stops everything. <laughs> and the Marauders clear it out. Here is Lyons. As Austin Prep has definitely kept the play down in this zone, uh, the majority of the last few minutes. Marauders once again will clear it out. We won't make it all the way to the end for icing, so a little bit of a break. And Marauders trying to put on some forechecking uh, action. And there's a nice steal from M.O. Donovan. O'Donovan, the shot, that goes wide of Warren Hannafin. I'm not sure we've actually mentioned her name here, maybe since the original starting lineup, but uh, Hannafin, sophomore goalie for Austin Prep. She too has 10 shutouts on the season, which you would expect for a team that's uh, coming in here at 19-1-2. and two. Yeah. two great goalies going at it today, so. Although so far Hannafin uh, not really tested quite as much as Gray has been. Let's see if the Marauders can get some kind of an attack going. There's Maggie O'Connor, she's uh, and now it's O'Donovan with it, but she lost it off the stick. At center, it's uh, stolen by Tabor, and she'll dump it in. And back to get it is Kendall Whalen. Again, shot will be dumped in by Tabor. Marauders looking to clear it out. They do. They were looking for O'Donovan, and once again, Good anticipation from Austin Prep. They steal it, and here comes Ern Tabor against goes to the backhand. Really can't get very much on it, and it goes wide. Now Francesca Freilich again. She's trying to go to the backhand, and she can't get much on that one either, and it also goes wide. Definitely want to try to force these shooters to yeah. the backhand, is, is that you definitely. can't really get as much shot on that mm -hmm. shot. Yeah, definitely. Down under 90 seconds to go here in the first period. Circling around, that's uh, Zakola. She dumps it back for Tabor. Tabor trying to get it back up to the point, but it's stolen and swept around by Maggie O'Connor. Rodders trying to clear, but again dumped in by the Cougars. That time it finally goes up the ice, and it will actually end up on goal, and Hannafin has to make a, uh, a save. Down to the final minute here in period number one. And here comes the shot blocked nicely there by Jenna Crowley. Right off the stick of Monique Lyons. And we'll have a whistle with 45 seconds remaining here in the uh, period. Face off will be uh, just outside the Marauder blue line. Willie Duffy, freshman, and it was in the uh, Belmont starting lineup today for uh, Coach Ken Murphy's Marauders, and Belmont does have control of it. Marchetta, Jalen Marchetta along the near boards, and Austin Prep once again with control. We're down though to under 25 seconds in the period. Sent back down where Maeve Carey will get it. Marauders trying to put a little bit of pressure on here. Maybe see if they can force a turnover. Still down in the Austin prep end as we're down under 10 seconds in the period. It'll be up to center. We'll see if the Cougars can get one last shot on net and uh, they will not be able to. Marauders break it up there. And we reach the end of uh, the first period. Uh, Nolan, your thoughts uh, well, so far? I mean, the story right now is Bridget Gray's been pretty good so far. I mean, they're almost doing a good job clogging the middle. Forcing girls on their backhand, like you said, but uh, maybe a little bit more shots, uh, get it deep, and they've been icing the puck a little bit, but uh, I definitely think they're, they're hanging in there, doing well, so it's a good period of hockey. Been good so far for through 15 minutes, no score after one. We'll be back with second period action in just a few minutes here on VHS Sports TV. We're back here at the O'Brien uh, Ice Rink in Woburn, Massachusetts, the home of the Woburn Tanners during the regular season, here for the second period in this uh, 
MIA Division I girls ice hockey quarterfinal matchup between the seventh seeded Marauders and the second seeded Austin Prep Cougars. Todd Bloniar is uh, joined by the uh, other half of the uh, the Grace uh, color analyst double team. This is uh, Nolan's younger brother, Matt. Did I get that right? You're the younger yeah. brother, right? Okay, okay. And you're free to bring that a little closer oh, to you so we can you. hear your dulcet tones on the uh, on the mic. And of course, just like your brother, you also play on the uh, the boys' hockey team. We didn't get a chance to talk to, to your, uh, your older brother about that. Maybe we'll see if we can squeeze something in here in the period. Of course, the boys' team also on their uh, own tournament run and uh, Jeremy Meserve, our fine producer and all everything for BHS Sports TV is uh, going to be covering those games as well. Uh, big game coming up at Songus Arena in a couple of days uh, for the boys team, Matt. And there's a uh, another cover-up save for Bridget Gray and Ned, who's been very busy. First period, we got the unofficial shot total at either 10-0 or maybe 10-1. I mean, it's always tough when you see a zero and the shot's on goal for any team. Uh, but Austin Prep definitely controlled that first period uh, in the shots department, Matt. Yeah, definitely. Uh, I think um, AP is getting a lot of shots to the high slot, and they're getting uh, very inside um, and getting a lot of easy shots on Bridget Gray. But I think Belmont needs to adjust on that. And if they are able to adjust on that, it's going to make it a lot easier for them. To well, get we're going to have our first penalty on the day, and it appears it's going to be on the Marauders as uh, M.O. Donovan was uh, racing down the ice. I think they may be calling her for a trip, and that's exactly what the call is going to be. And uh, Austin Prep, who's already been controlling uh, the offensive play now, is going to have a, uh, a golden opportunity, I believe, with the penalty called on uh, M.O. Donovan, uh, the assistant captain and uh, leading scorer uh, coming into today's game with 30 goals. So it is a 90-second penalty. Oh, check that, a two-minute penalty. Oh, okay. 15-minute periods with two-minute penalties. Okay, they, I guess they've tinkered with the rules since I last did the game. But it is Austin Prep on the power play here. Rodgers trying to clear it out. His own back pass will be kept in. And there's a shot on net and another save for oh, Bridget Gray. Well, no, the puck went behind the net. What did they call there? Well, he blew the whistle, unless maybe the official lost sight of the uh, the puck, which could have, which is a break for the Marauders as the faceoff comes outside the zone. Apparently, they must be calling a, uh, an infraction against Austin Prep since they brought it outside of the Belmont zone on the faceoff as Maggie O'Connor tried to control that. Back up at the point. From the top of the slot, a shot right in, and again, Bridget Gray seeing it perfectly as Maeve Carey is denied by Belmont's freshman goalie. Yeah, play a phenomenal right now. Bridget Gray is keeping them in this right now. With a lot of huge saves. Still a minute 14 left on the, uh, the two-minute minor penalty. Yeah, I'm not sure when they changed the rules. Uh, maybe you can help me out there, Matt. When did they change it from uh, 90 seconds to two-minute minor penalties? To be honest, I'm not sure. We play um, our Belmont team, boys. We also do two-minute penalties. Um, okay, I guess I, it's been a while yeah. then. It's also been a while since I've called a high school game, yeah. obviously, as you can tell. Yeah. Still remember the, well, the 90-second ones were in sync because you yeah. play 15-minute periods. So. Yeah, I think a lot of the youth hockey also plays on the 90-second. Because when I was in youth hockey, we did a lot of 90 seconds. Okay. But right when we got to high school, we started doing two-minute uh, power plays. Under 40 seconds left in this power play for Austin Prep. Well, the tough part about it is they've kept the period lengths at 15 minutes, but now the, the penalties have been increased to a full two. Yeah. So you're, it's definitely a larger percentage of time that you're in the box and that the uh, your opponent has the uh, one-up advantage here. Yeah. Here's another shot in. That just goes wide off the uh, stick of uh, Zakola. Kept in once again by the Cougars, shot and deflected and scored! A power play goal for Austin Prep, which comes two and a half minutes into the second period, and the Cougars lead 1-0. Great shot from outside, up top of the point. Good deflection. It almost looked like it was deflected off uh, one of the Belmont player sticks as well, as there was a uh, there was a player right in front of Gray, but I also saw there was an Austin Prep player in front too, and it's in all likelihood she'll get credit for the goal. Yeah, definitely. It was a big scrum up front. I couldn't tell who deflected it. 
Haven't had much success hearing the PA guy, so I'm not sure who's going to get credit for this or if we'll be able to hear it on there. But uh, it's a 1-0 lead for Austin Prep thanks to the power play goal, and that's uh, unfortunately a costly penalty for the Marauders. 24, Monique Lyons gets the goal. And I think they gave uh, Francesca Freelich the assist. Who, uh, it was Freelich number seven who shot it from the point, and it was Lyons who got the uh, redirect in front of Bridget Gray. And again, talk about the difference in the penalties. Had they still been playing under 90-second penalty rules, O'Donovan would have already been out of the box because that came in the uh, very latter stages of yeah, that definitely. power play for Austin Prep. Making a long, chunk, a long chunk of the uh, period right there, in a long chunk of the uh, five on four kind of takes a lot of out, takes a lot out of you when you're um, when you're trying to kill off that that, that much time. Yeah, absolutely. So now the Marauders forced to play from behind. Again, going up against a very talented Austin Prep team. They come into this game winners of 13 straight, a 19-1-2 record on the year. Their only loss came back on uh, came back in January against Wellesley. They lost that game three to one. They were outshot in that game 32 to nine, and that's pretty much what it's taken to uh, to beat this Austin Prep team this year. And, and in fact, that loss uh, for Wellesley uh, back in January was their first regular season loss in three years. So these Cougars are uh, not really used to losing games very often, especially in the regular season. As it's shot down by O'Donovan. Awesome Prep's defensive core is very strong for them. They hold the blue line very well. Here's a, uh, another shot around the net. Rodgers... Uh, Trying to defend there again, and, and here's a, another centering opportunity. Setting up from behind the goal in front, the shot, and a pad saved by Gray. That shot will get dumped back in. Matt, one of the things you were saying during the uh, intermission, you'd mentioned what the Marauders had done fairly well, what they need to continue to do, as you said, force uh, Austin Prep from the outside as Gray makes another stop. Yeah, definitely. I think um, their D love to pinch Austin Preps and keep them to the outside makes them have to um, pinch less and also it doesn't create much chances to the high slot. So that's a, a big key factor that they need to keep going. Another good round of defense by the Marauders there is uh, Hulse couldn't get anything on that shot. But the question is, can the Marauders create some offensive opportunities for themselves? O'Donovan has it in her zone and uh, bumped off the puck. It's kept in. That was uh, Winkland falling down. The, it's out in front. We've got a, another penalty coming up here, and it's going to be on Belmont once again, giving Austin Prep their second power play opportunity once the Marauders touch the puck. I think there's another tripping. Waiting to see the official call that. High school officials do not put names on their jerseys, so we can't really call the official out, or at least mention by name, but it is another tripping call. And the time of that penalty is at 5.30, as we've got nine and a half minutes to go here in this middle stanza. Didn't even see who the penalty was on there, uh, other than it's on a Belmont player. So again, a second, almost a second consecutive So this Austin Prep team, which by the way came into this game, we you know, not only winners of 13 in a row, but uh, we talk about their offensive prowess. They've scored 115 goals on the season. They've only allowed 25. That is a plus 90 goal differential for the Cougars. I mean, the Marauders have some impressive numbers of their own. They're a plus 30 this season on the uh, goal differential. But again, just to show you how good this Austin Prep team is. And the last thing you want to do is give a team like this a power play opportunity, but the second one here, Marauders doing a decent job so far as they dump the puck down once. There's uh, Megan Noon fighting for the puck. Now she's double teamed and it's stolen away. They bring it up to the top of the uh, slot to carry. Near side, the shot from Zakola. 
Back up to Carey. Carey uh, making a move on Kara Rowan. Now a uh, give and go here. It's uh, Freelich taking point and the shot goes wide. Of course it was Freelich from the uh, slot last time who put the shot in and the redirect came from Monique Lyons on the uh, last Austin Prep power play. That shot goes over the goal. Under 30 seconds left in this power play for Austin Prep. Belmont's penalty kill is a lot more effective keeping their uh, defense to the outside and not letting them get shots in close. No, you're absolutely right, Matt. They're seeing it, and there's another shot, and Gray got a piece of it. And that was a tough screen she had to fight through, but she uh, got her arm on that one. Was able to deflect it. Here's another shot, and again it goes off the arm Great or shoot. shoulder of Gray. And the power play uh, is up. And it's O'Donovan who's uh, coming out onto the ice. So teams are back five aside once again. However, play is still down in Belmont zone. They are trying to push it up, get uh, some kind of an offense. Or, yeah, we're gonna get a, we're gonna get a uh, Belmont power play here. I think we got another tripping penalty called. We did see the uh, Belmont player get upended. Another trip. And so with 7.08 to go here in the period, Austin Prep in the box, and the Marauders get a much-needed power play here trying to even up the score. Let's see if this will help open up some of the offense, Matt. Yeah, definitely. I think this could be very huge and crucial for this team. If you get a goal, get some confidence, and get some shots on that play. O'Donovan on the uh, faceoff. The Marauders try to control, but it will be sent down the ice. And watch out here for Austin Prep as uh, they're trying to get a, a short-handed rush. That was uh, Ern Tabor stealing it away. Tabor still has a shot and a save by Gray. So even short-handed, these Cougars are getting shots on net and Gray has uh, got to come up big once again with 6.48 to go here in the second. Austin Prep leading by a score of one nothing. Todd Blonier is along with our videographer and executive producer, Jeremy Meserve on this broadcast and joined here in the second period by Matt Grace, younger brother of Nolan Grace. Uh, both of the Grace brothers will be playing in a couple of days up at Songus Arena in a uh, big Marauder boys hockey game. Is, uh... Have you had a chance to really keep up with the girls given that you guys have your own tournament yeah, run going? Or... Yeah, we've been, um, it's been very good because the boys team and the girls team have been very supportive of each other. Both teams have come out to watch each other every game. We uh, talk with each other at school all the time. We give each other advice. We, uh, we really treat each other with a lot of respect for each other. And it helps. It goes a long way. The support for each other really goes a long way and helps. Here comes O'Donovan making a way in. The shot and a save by Hannafin. That was one of the few clean opportunities, maybe the first one we've seen all day, where O'Donovan was finally able to break loose from uh, a very tough Austin Prep defense. Another shot, that one headed wide and was swept behind the net by Hannafin. Of course, if the Riders come back and win this game, Matt, it might be awfully tough uh, for the girls to come see you play on Monday night because the girls, too, would be playing on Monday evening right back here at the Orion uh, rink. So, yeah. yeah. Uh, Belmont sports loyalties will be divided. Yeah, definitely. <laughs> kind of a bummer that they have to schedule the games on the same night, potentially, I know, but... I that does stink. Boys will have a, a game against uh, St. John's of Shrewsbury. I can still remember a tournament game uh, my good friend Mike Higgins and I called over 25 years ago up at Merrimack College. It was the Marauders taking on St. John's of Shrewsbury. A game that lasted three days. You want to hear that story? Yeah, I'd love to. I'd love to. <laughs> it was a Saturday afternoon like this, and there were like four games to be played, and yeah. I believe the Belmont game was either the first or the second. There was at least two more games that were supposed to follow. Yeah. They played through a full overtime, and then they decided, well, they needed to, or no, I think they might have played two overtimes. They decided, we've got to keep this moving. Uh, Marauders had come back to tie it late in the third period. Yeah. And... Uh, we played through two full overtime periods, and they said, well, we got to get these other two games in, so we're going to... Here's a goal! Oh! oh what a save! Wow, what a save, save made by Hannafin. We'll finish that story in a little bit. That was a backhanded attempt there by Jalen Marchetta. 
Another shot oh, and a quick rush the other oh, way. Man. No goal. No, they're going to say no goal. goal. Yeah, good call there, Matt, because they had blown the whistle. Uh, they blew the whistle on the initial stop by Bridget Ryan, but a very quick recovery rush there by Austin Prep after the Marauders almost got one. I, you know, Matt, for a minute I thought uh, Marchetta's shot might have been off the post, yeah. but I guess Hannafin got a piece of it. Two fantastic saves. Oh, there was, it looked like there was a huge open net opportunity there for a moment, and yeah, Ryan's save at the other end just as big. Wow, faceoff will be to Ryan's left here as we got 4.39 to go here in the second period. The game is getting very interesting. Belmont's trying to create some offense right now. Now well, they've got in a little bit more offense here in this period than we saw in the first. Shot comes in, it's blocked. That had made it on net again. Uh, quite a screen that uh, Ryan would have had to uh, try to see that puck through. Gray, I'm sorry, Bridget Gray. I mean, Here comes another centering pass attempt, and it ends up uh, going right back on the stick of Carey. Also, Clutch team is very fast in the offensive zone. They really can move. They sure can. It's sent back down the ice, down to four minutes to go in the period. Okay, I'll try to wrap up the story really quick here, Matt. Yeah, uh, yeah Marauders played through two overtimes. It was tied. They suspended the game on Saturday. They told both teams they had to come back on Monday afternoon. At like 2 o'clock, Mike and I had to call in sick from work that day, our respective <laughs> jobs, so we could get yeah. back up and broadcast the uh, conclusion of the game. The good news was they were not playing sudden death when they came back on Monday. They played a full 20-minute overtime period. It was a good thing because uh, Belmont gave up a goal like 30 seconds into the overtime. Imagine if we had driven all the way up on a Monday to broadcast 30 know, seconds of 30 hockey. Seconds in, right? As it was, we played a whole period. Uh, St. John's added a second goal, and I believe the final score was like 5-3 or something yeah. like that. So... Uh, yeah. How crazy though. It was crazy. It was crazy that they suspended the game when they did too. I mean, again, I, I mean, I can see the MIA side to one level because you had other games and you didn't want to keep pushing the schedule back. There were two more games still left to be played at Merrimack that day, and they didn't want to be there all night. But I don't know. To reschedule it for a Monday afternoon. I know. It was like a, I think it was three o'clock or so, two or three o'clock. It's just crazy. it's crazy. crazy. Anyway, down under three minutes to go now in the period. So it'll be another uh, Marauder uh, rematch with St. John's of Shrewsbury. That's Monday night at Saugus Arena. Meanwhile, Marauder's trying to do something here to even the score. They've had a couple of opportunities this period, and that uh, will be a cover-up by Hannafin off the, uh, the front side of the net. So Moffin's trying to be creative right now by the Marauders. Let's see if they can keep it going, though. This is awesome. Preps defensive core is very good. Are able to break up very simple and easy. What do you think's been some of the key? You think that power play helped loosen things up a little for Belmont to get to, to create a little bit more yeah, uh, in the way I, of opportunities? I do. I think once that first, uh, to be honest, I think once that first shot came in, they started to gain confidence of being in the offensive zone and breaking the puck out. And it became a lot more simple and easy for them to get the puck out of the zone and get shots on net. And now they're starting to test this goalie. Another centering pass in front, but nobody there that time for the Cougars, and it winds up on the stick of Marchetta, and she'll send it on down. It'll roll into the near corner as we uh, approach two minutes remaining here in the second period. Austin Prep with a power play goal early this period for the first score, and we see one of the uh, Belmont players uh, take a tumble. That was Jenna Crowley, no call. Belmont fans here at the uh, Ryan uh, uh, Ice Arena react. Sorry, that's the O'Brien Ice Arena. Told you, I haven't been up here in a couple decades. Uh, forgive me if I don't remember the name of the place, but uh, it is the very same arena, and it reminds me, boy, it doesn't look like it's changed much other than the amount of slapped on a fresh coat of paint recently. When I say recent, that might have been like, you know, 10 years ago. What a great crowd to come but out. But it it's, it's a great facility. I mean, they've done a nice job keeping it in uh, playing shape, much like many of the mass arenas uh, around here. Great crowd here today, very electric. There is a big crowd, and I know later today they're going to be uh, going up uh, north to Lowell to uh, oh. try to catch some basketball. That shot is deflected over the uh, net and out of play. we got 141 to go here in the period. Faceoff's actually coming back outside the, yeah, back outside of the Austin Prep blue line. Yeah, I think that uh, got deflected out off M.O. Diamond's stick and almost went in the net, but a little bit too high. But the offense is coming. We're starting to uh, gain some offense and some confidence, I think. 
O'Donovan uh, wins the faceoff, and Noon sends it down into the Austin prep zone. Final 90 seconds here of period number two. Once again, sent back in. Maeve Carey goes to get it. Avoids the Marauder check. Pulse has it far side, dumps it off for Lions, who has the power play goal, the only goal of this game so far. And now down to the final 60 ticks here in the period, and another save for Bridget Gray. Freshman goalies had a tremendous season, but it was Lions with the redirect on the power play earlier this period that has broken the scoreless tie. Marauders, there's a play and a shot and a, oh, a save. with the save and boy, Kenzel Whalen, that was sort of like a, look what I found, the pass just kind of ended up on her stick yeah. in front of her and Hannafin had to come up big on the uh, the point blank shot. Yeah, I mean a great four check by Rowan to get that puck, to make that defense make the mistake and throw the puck out to Kendall. Like what a save, what a save. Yeah, Kara Rowan there uh, kind of setting the play up. So that the uh, shot opportunity was there. Now down to 30 seconds. That pass broken up as it looked like he could have had a, a rush from uh, Sabina Axelrod. 19 was uh, going to break in on net all alone. Marauders did a nice job breaking up that potential uh, two on one. Last 10 seconds of the period, Marauders uh, avoid a, a shot there as it goes wide. Last chance, and it'll be the end of the period as the horn sounds, or the buzzers, if you will. We have played 30 minutes, and Austin Prep has finally broken through on a uh, power play goal that came at 2.30 of the period off the uh, redirect for Monique Lyons. Shot from the point by Francesca Freilich. Your thoughts on the second period, Matt? Yeah, I think after um, that, that goal by AP, it kind of struck um, Belmont a little bit. Belmont got their own power play, caught a couple shots on that, and now we're feeling confident. So I think this third period is going to be a really good one with a lot of high offense and a lot of high speed by both teams. Absolutely. Let's take a break here. And uh, third period action coming up straight away on BHS Sports TV. We welcome you back to third period action as we see the Marauders uh, take to the ice here at the uh, O'Brien Ice Rink in Woburn. Again, regular season home of the Middlesex League Liberty Division's Woburn Tanners. Todd Bloniars uh, alongside uh, videographer and executive producer of BHS Sports TV, Jeremy Meserve. And uh, back in the tag team Grace Brothers, <laughs> we're joined once again by uh, big brother Nolan Grace here. How are you? Good. You uh, did a fine job in the first period. Thank I guess you, you, and, you. you and Matt are going to be splitting up duties here for the, the final period. Yeah. Potentially. We don't yeah. know. It's a, it's a one goal yeah. game right now. You never exactly. know what might transpire Same. here. Uh, yeah. Well, but Nolan, uh, you obviously were watching the second period, yes. even if you weren't on air. So your thoughts, yes. uh, oh. what you saw on both sides. I mean, it obviously, was, off the, the tempo prep. picked up big time. That's what I saw. I mean, it was way more physical, and, you know, there's just a lot, a lot going on. Like, Girls are playing harder. It's a very exciting period to watch. Yeah, um, and Belmont getting some shot opportunities. Yeah. Uh, officially now, uh, the first period shots were 12-0 in favor of Austin Prep. Second period, much more competitive, 11-6. Yeah. So a 23-6 yeah. shot advantage. Belmont actually getting some legit scoring opportunities and shots on Warren Hannafin in that second period. Mm -hmm. So we'll see what now happens here in the third. Marauders looking for the equalizer. And here comes... M.O. Donovan will send it around the boards. Rowan has it there into the near corner. And that one will be sent down the ice. That Could that be, I guess, not an icing. She was over the blue line. And Pulse comes up with it for the Cougars on the long pass. Centering oh, a great what a save. No, a save. Good save. What a save indeed for... Wow. Bridget Gray it's a one more time. Dandy of a save right there. Huge. It sure was. I think that was Hulse on the uh, shot in front. Yeah. That's and huge. Though. Wow. Well, every save uh, Gray makes at this point is huge. As yeah. Marauders try to keep this at a one-goal deficit. Mm -hmm. 
Faceoff, won by Austin Prep, and the shot in, and Gray will stop it. Right off the stick of Maeve Carey shooting from the point. I feel like, I feel a goal coming from Belmont. The chances they had in the second, I don't know. I mean, they're playing hard and they want it, you can tell, especially in the second period, so. Well, we'll see, unfortunately, this is gonna be an icing. Mm -hmm. As the uh, pass was a little wide of the intended target at center ice, so. We have played 61 seconds here in the third period. Only goal of the game coming last period. Monique Lyons of Austin Prep redirecting uh, Francesca Freilich's uh, shot from the slot, coming at 2.30 of the second period, a power play goal, giving Austin Prep the one nothing lead. Faceoff will be to Gray's right. And faceoff controlled, and all of a sudden just racing in was Lyons bidding for her second, and she did get stopped before she got to the net to try to flick a wrister off, but Marauders will get it out of the zone and it'll be dumped back in by Madeline Rinklin. There is Megan Noon trying to bounce it off the boards, but it goes long for Sam Rochi, and here come the Cougars again. Right along the uh, near side here. Just underneath our uh, little balcony perch. The O'Brien rink and they're fighting for the puck and someone's got to dig it loose and uh, it is finally dug loose back out of the zone. Kendall Whalen going in but it comes right back the other way. Lyons was upended but no call. And puck deflects back to center. Rinklin has it. O'Donovan tried to uh, intercept the pass. Certainly the Marauders' best chances for an equalizer are when uh, number 21, the assistant captain, M.O. Donovan Jr., center, is on the ice. Mm -hmm. as she has scored five of their six postseason goals. Yeah, she's been great this season. She's been a great season. You know, helping her team through the postseason, too. Bridget Gray and... Lily Duffy, Megan Noon, Jenna Crowley, all, and more. But. Yeah, and she wins the uh, face off there, pushing it for O'Connor, but could not get it out of the zone. Now they do. Frail at cross ice to Tabor. Tabor's shot will go wide into the near corner. There's O'Connor, again, couldn't get it out. Shot blocked off of uh, Noon's shin and back on out. And here come the Marauders, and there's O'Donovan again, was trying to create the two-on-one uh, rush, but it's broken up. And for all of Austin Prep's offensive prowess and the numbers they put up all year, you can see they're a very stout defensive team as well, and they've had a strategy going into this game to try to neutralize Emma O'Donovan, who's had limited opportunities uh, getting shots on net in this game, as really have uh, all of the Marauders. Marauders outshot 23 to 6 through the first two periods, but they are trailing just one nothing. So if Gray continue to perform in net and they can catch a break or an odd man rush, then there'll be some opportunities here in the remainder of this third period. Behind the net, poked out, and here comes. Francesca Freelich, one of their captains, racing down the ice. Going to go to another backhand, and Gray makes the stop and pushes it away. Nice job by the Marauders once again, though, as we mentioned in the first period, Nolan, yeah. forcing these Austin Prep players to their backhand. Yeah, exactly. It's key. Eliminate those opportunities. Once again, Belmont trying to clear this out, and it will be intercepted and stolen. A two-on-one and a score. That time, Lyons sets up Freelich. I believe that's Freelich with the uh, no check that. It's uh, uh, Isabel Hulse mm -hmm. with the goal at 4.04 of this third period to make it two to nothing. Yeah. It's almost impossible to stop a two on a. It was good play, making that pass, finding the open there. And a uh, tough break for Belmont, but a lot, of, a lot of hockey left. Here is the face-off. Tell you, the Marauders have uh, done a decent job just trying to limit. This is an Austin Prep team that's averaging over five goals a game. Here is a, a Donovan, but again, it is 
sticked away. Lions and Hulks combined for five goals in uh, Austin Prep's last win, uh, an 8-3 victory against uh, Andover. The uh, win that got the Cougars to this game is uh, once again, Gray makes another stop with 10.31 to go. Yeah, I mean, Belmont's missing one of their key players, actually, their captain, Katie Gooden, who's also going to play Phil Lockie at Holy Cross. So, but they're doing pretty well without her right now. But I'm sure they, they miss her a lot. So. And she is one of the senior captains and uh, helps uh, man that blue line, as you uh, said, Nolan. And yeah. down to the final 10 minutes here. Or check that, I'm sorry, she's, a, she's, uh, well, she's, uh, she's up front, she's a yes, center. Yes. This one comes right back out. And once again, here is Austin Prep. That was a uh, bit of a back-breaking goal there moments ago from the Cougars as the shot by O'Donovan sails over the goal. Again, going for the steal was uh, Holloway, I believe, and stumped back down with nine and a half minutes to go here in regulation time. Now Belmont needs two goals to tie. There's uh, Zakola. Cross ice and now pushed up to Sabina Axelrod. Shot bounces in and Bridget Gray comes up with another stop with 9.12 to go here in the third. Bridget Gray continues to be solid in that, and uh, that's huge for Belmont to keep them in this game. Two not though, nine minutes left. They can get two goals, two bounces, so Bridget keep making these saves, they, they're still in it. Yeah, I mean, she couldn't, like you, you were saying moments ago, uh, Nolan, she couldn't do much on that two on O rush mm -hmm. there. Is, uh, yeah. That was just good hustle play from Austin Prep to uh, extend their lead. Rodders again racing down the side. The Sam Rochi with the shot behind the net. And it will be dumped in by Del Bonin. So I look down this Belmont roster, I believe there's five seniors on this team. Yes, uh, I believe so. Could potentially be playing in their final game here today. That includes number eight, Shannon Holloway. Uh, of course, actually one of the five seniors, uh, Katie uh, Gooden, as you said uh, mm -hmm. earlier, Nolan is uh, injured, not available today. But of course, uh, se senior co-captain Megan Noon, uh, number 22, number 23, Kara Rowan, and of course, number 24, Maggie O'Connor. Mm -hmm. So we're down to eight and a half to go here. Rochi on the face-off. Controlled by Austin Prep. They try to center it out in front. And O'Donovan had it, lost it off her stick. Once again kept in. Lions shot and another save for Gray. Yeah, if you're a bummer, you want to try to keep those shots out of the slot. I mean, Bridget's been on fire, but eliminate those chances. Get the puck deep. Go to work, you know, so. Yeah, and what's what's really the you know getting almost to a point here too, you know, when where you got to start thinking about uh, you know maybe taking a few gambles uh, yeah, offensively, trying definitely. to create the the mm -hmm. you know the odd player uh, rush uh, uh, breakaway mm -hmm. opportunity, but yeah. it's time to take some risks. Yeah. Try to get one. Indeed, is uh, gets knocked up to center and uh, battle for the puck along the near boards here. And it's uh, sent back down. Here's Lions again. Lions gets uh, upended. There will be a penalty there. Either a trip or a hook, I would imagine. Or maybe a hold. Let's see what they're going to. Uh... Yeah. Nope. I think I heard the official say five on five. Yeah, it might be matching. So I think we are going to have matching penalties, yeah. and they're each going to. There was a hold and they uh, didn't even hear what the other call was, but. Uh, uh, I'm going to hand this one off to Maddie. Okay, yes. you having me on. So, All right, well, yeah, uh, thank out. you, Nolan. Great yeah, work. No yeah, problem. Good thank luck. You. Good luck on Monday yeah, against I appreciate St. John's Shoes. Thank you. It's going to be a heck of a game. And again, VHS Sports T will be, be covering that one as well. Uh, 
Jeremy's been through a busy couple of weeks between uh, basketball and hockey and all the success of the, uh, the Belmont High teams. Yeah, the winter sport's been really good for us this year. Very fortunate. A lot of hard work put in by all teams. Absolutely. Here comes a uh, pass near side. Kendall Whalen, number six with it. Racing down the near side. We'll send it back around. There's uh, Crowley with the keep in for a moment, but then it's poked free. Here comes Austin Prep. There's the shot. And a save by Gray off the stick of Kira Caccini. So we are now down to 6.55 left here in the third period. So far, Austin Prep has um, really worked from behind the net this year and has used to their advantage because they're getting their D a lot more open for shots. Well, regardless of how this ends up, one of the deepest uh, tournament runs for the girls' hockey program, which began back in the uh, late 80s, early 90s from the original coach, uh, kind of almost the founder of Belmont High School girls hockey. That would be uh, longtime head coach Mark Haley, who I remember because uh, I think we covered one of the first uh, couple of uh, games. And in fact, that first year, I believe Belmont even, uh, they got they made a really deep tournament run that year. Of course, there, were only a, there was also a limited number of uh, girls hockey programs back then, but I remember we were at Northeastern University uh, covering a game way back when. When I was younger and uh, a bit lighter. And uh, here's, the, uh, here's a uh, shot coming in and Hannafin will uh, cover it up. Although I will say this, Mark Haley did a tremendous, uh, a lot of time and effort on his part to really kind of sustain the girls hockey program to get it where it is today. There was yeah. a couple years where, of course, Belmont and Watertown had low numbers and they merged the two teams together. But for the last five years, Ken Murphy uh, has taken over uh, as the head coach of the uh, girls varsity program, along with uh, his assistant, Danielle Pargoli. And of course, JV coach uh, Deji Fimiani. And, you know, the fact that they have a JV program again is uh, part of the reason why uh, Belmont has uh, their own program once again. But uh, it's uh, nice to see this is the second time in the five years since uh, Belmont returned to single town status that they are uh, playing in the postseason. As I said, it, it's been a historic run uh, for this Belmont team. A couple of great wins, and uh, they're really hanging in here against a very talented Austin Prep team that uh, has the speed and uh, defensive skills to uh, really give opponents a hard time, and you're, you're seeing it on display here. Up at center, now there's Kendall Whalen. She'll send it back in. We'll go all the way back around one more time. That's Rochi down there. Austin Prep has a very, very, very simple and easy way of executing their breakout. It's been working for them all day long. It most certainly has, uh, Matt, no question there. And meanwhile, back the other way, Lily Duffy, the freshman. Duffy trying to make a move and uh, cannot quite get around Zakola. Now the battle, and it is dug out by the Cougars. Here's Hulse, who got the last goal, but in front, an opportunity and a shot by Lily Duffy, but Hannafin makes the save. Kind of an errant pass there uh, for the Cougars, and Lily Duffy almost there to take advantage of it. Let's see if that can spark some confidence for the Belmont offense with 4.59 uh, to go. Time is uh, definitely uh, starting to become a factor here. Yeah. Yeah, so Donovan wins the faceoff. Noon up at the point. Will fire in the shot. It got blocked. And once again, here comes Austin Prep. Filippo will dump it down into the zone. Noon will give chase. Megan Noon has it. And it goes right back on the stick of Filippo. Oh, shot it. A, a, a save as uh, Daisy McClellan, I believe, 15, uh, had the uh, shot on net. Check that, 18. Another save for Gray, though, has been very effective. Yeah, she's been unbelievable. She's kept him in this game so far. Winner of this game will play the winner of Braintree and Arlington in our uh, final quarter final game. And then uh, the, the winner of this game, the winner of that game, will play Monday night right back here. I'm not trying to become the second Middlesex League team to advance into the semifinal round. 
Here comes O'Donovan, still going in, trying to center that one for Kara Rowan. Comes right back on a uh, pass in front, but it got blocked. And it's dumped in once again, that time by Emma Spengler. Up against the boards and Rodders doing battle. Duffy trying to dig it free. Instead, it ends up on the stick of Monique Lyons. She'll go in the shot and it bounces over Gray and into the net. And with just 3.51 to go, that might be the final dagger in this one as Austin Prep now takes a three goal lead. That'll be the second goal of the game for Monique Lyons, who's coming off a hat trick yeah. in the Cougars' uh, last tournament win against Andover. Very weird bounce, but very effective taking it to the net, driving to the net and getting that shot off. Lyons with a three-point game as she assisted on their other goal. Still, though, you gotta really admire uh, the Marauders because they have held the team that has been averaging well over five goals a game to just three today. But just too much offensive firepower ultimately on this uh, Austin Prep team as well as uh, some pretty good defensive uh, firepower as well, limiting the scoring opportunities for the Marauders this afternoon. Here's another break in attempt. That was uh, Megan Noon. The shot is deflected wide. Back up to center deflected in and will go back down as we're now under three minutes remaining. Willie Duffy will go back for Belmont trying to get control of the puck. Once again, Austin Prep in control. Tabor off the stick of Freelich. Freelich gets it back. And it'll be not cleared out as we're down under two and a half minutes to go. That's Bonin down there. Bonin will send it up. And here comes O'Donovan with another rush. And as she's been most of the day today, there are two white jerseys between her as she gets close to the goal. That's really been uh, the strategy deployed by Austin Prep head coach Stephanie Wood today, and it's worked to perfection from the Cougars' standpoint. Now down under two minutes remaining. Down into the corner again, that was Noon uh, with it. It ends up back on the stick of uh, Pulse, who fires a shot, looking for her second goal of the game. Lions with a three-point game today. Two goals and an assist. The power play goal got it started. There's a rebound as uh, Gray couldn't hold on to that and Elise Lyons. Boy, by the way, I, you know, I didn't even notice this until I'm looking at this roster. Monique Lyons is one of their top offensive players. She's an eighth grader. She's an eighth grader, wow, yeah. <laughs> she's a very effective player. She's got Wait, can you imagine career. what she's going to be like when she's a senior? I know. <laughs> wow, <laughs> that's crazy. Yeah, she is a very, she's a very talented player. We just played very well today, probably would All get, if we, if we dished out three stars after the game, I think she probably would be my first star yeah. uh, the way she's been playing. So we're down to the final 75 seconds of uh, what appears to be the uh, the end of the Belmont girls hockey season, but uh, here's Duffy with it. Duffy breaking in. I gotta say, awesome Prep's defense and coordinator has been spot on, and so is their goalie. Their goalie's made some huge saves today. Right in the slot, open shots, and they're just, just getting those saves. There's an icing on Austin Prep. Faceoff will come back down with 49.7 seconds to go. Not sure if uh, Belmont head coach Ken Murphy will consider uh, pulling Gray out for an extra attacker uh, down by three. I mean, might be a bit of a concession on his part here. Always kind of a tough spot to be in at the end 
of a game like this. There's a shot by O'Donovan. She was trying to go top corner shelf. That's uh, an impossible shot for a goalie to save. Unfortunately, she was a little bit over the crossbar on that one. Down to the final 30 seconds. Sent around by Austin Prep. Looks like Austin Prep is trying to eat the timeout. A tremendous season for the Belmont Marauders varsity girls hockey team will unfortunately come to an end here at the O'Brien Ice Rink this afternoon in the quarterfinal round of the Division I tournament. Final seconds tick away and I, there it is. I didn't even hear the horn go off, but uh, Laura Hannafin being mobbed by her teammates and uh, on the other side, uh, Marauders going over to uh, console Bridget Gray who uh, played her heart out. Marauders really played their heart out too. They just, yeah. you know, unfortunately came up short against a uh, much better team, uh, Matt. Uh, yeah. this is a team, you know, this, this Austin prep team doesn't lose very often. They only had one yeah. loss all year. and Very deep team, especially with their defensive core. They were very deep. And to be honest with you, their goalie was phenomenal today. Both goalies played phenomenal, but AP's goalie really just got the job done today. Yeah, there's no question about it. Belmont finishes their season at 15-4-4. And, four, and um, well, I mean, their only losses before today, their, their only losses to date had been to their uh, league opponents, Woburn and Arlington. Woburn has already advanced to the semifinals, winning last night. Arlington plays Braintree later this afternoon right here. They'll have a chance to advance as well. So yeah. Belmont is not that far away. Uh, you know, and they're going to get M.O. Donovan coming back next year, coming off of a 30-goal season. Yeah. And they've got, of course, the freshman goalie, uh, Bridget Gray, yeah. as well. Uh, got a great future for them. It was a great season. Fun to watch. No no question about that. Hey, Matt, you and your brother Nolan, uh, thank you. Great job. Thank you. And uh, good luck to you in your game up thank at Songus you. on uh, on uh, Monday night uh, as the Marauders try to get to, uh, that's it's the D1 North final, right? Yes, so yeah. you win that one, you're going- uh, To the garden. To the garden, yeah. that's right, going to TD Garden. Yeah, I know. That would be uh, that would be pretty historic too that for the uh, Belmont Boys yeah, varsity program. So good luck guys, thank you. I really appreciate, appreciate it. that. Once again, I want to thank Jeremy Meserve as well. He's giving you all the shots uh, behind the uh, the camera there. And uh, he's, he's still got a busy afternoon yeah. here coming up. So uh, from all of us to all of you, we'll uh, say so long. Final score here, Austin Prep three. Belmont nothing, the end of the girls' hockey season, but a very successful one, and we want to thank you for watching BHS Sports TV.